you, you mentioned within the the women's rugby uh, uh, field, you know, there's there's always a very limited. I, I I think it was really the ones that came up to mind was you know Wendy Young with uh, Scrum Half Connection. It was you with the rugby breakdown, and it was uh, the the ladies in England uh, with Scrum Queen. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know. Whenever you have this niche, this this group of people, like what is it that you're seeing within women's rugby that, I mean, outside of the obvious obstacles that seems to be ignored by the mass public? Like, take away the the money situation, but um, what is it that you're seeing in women's rugby that that needs to that feels like it needs to just kind of get that little trigger turnover to be able to maybe get more of the respect that it's it's well deserved. Well, I think that's a, a multi-tiered question there. And when I think about those things, I think about what my role could be in it in terms of the answer. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's the whole reason behind the rugby breakdown. It's just getting information out there. So while we might have complaints that XYZ, you know, doesn't cover women's rugby or it's not getting the press it deserves, like the rugby breakdown is giving it that press you know so that's what that's what I focus on like at some point um, someone's going to have a question or they're going to want to learn about something and I've had you know a ton of you know a, a ton of different outlets from different sports all over just kind of shoot me an email and be like well it sounds like you you know you know what you're talking about and if I can be a resource until more things change um then that's you know that's how I see my role in this like huge issue in like equity in women's sports and <laughs> it's kind of yeah brand. No, no that's awesome. Uh, like, w- when did you realize? Like, when did you? Because obviously at the beginning of your career, you you kind of were just like, oh, it's rugby. I get to write and do rugby media. This is awesome. But when did it get that moment when you were like, okay, this is this is my this is my purpose. Like, when, 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 when was that moment? What was that moment for you? Um, well, I actually had always, you know, gravitated toward women's rugby, obviously. Um, but when I was at Rugby Mag with Alex Goff, you know, he was always pushing me, like, you know, do the men's stuff, too. I should do the women's stuff. We should share this kind of thing. And I, you know, I always just kind of leaned toward the women's mm-hmm. side. Um, and then when we left and we... You know, I joined him at golf rugby. It really did become he did the men, I did the women. And then, you know, I was 35 years old, got to a point where I was like, okay, I think I can, you know, I just wanted to do something on my own and, like, have it be me. And um, so it was, like, a totally, you know, fine parting, and I just wanted to see, I wanted to see if I could do it, and I also wanted to see what a totally... U.S. focused women's site would look like because there was a lot of at that time a lot of questions as to whether it could be sustained if there'd be enough interest um, and I was like, well, there's one good way to answer that question and that's to just go and do it and you know test it that way. And you know, uh, was has has business been a, a facilitation has been a, a part of your your biology in any way or was this kind of like the first instance that you were like this is my baby, this is like my business and, you know, I'm just, I'm winging it at this point. Or did you kind of have an idea going in? Uh, a little bit, I mean, this is definitely my first, what I'd consider baby. Um, and, but, you know, through all the other entities that, you know, I, I had worked for, there is always, you know, it's small staff, so you do a little bit of everything from designing ads to soliciting advertisers and, you know, a lot of design stuff. So it certainly had some insight but I've got a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't that the, the fun of the business? You know, it, it makes you keep constantly keeping you challenged in one way, shape, or form. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, for me, I, I've when it came to women's rugby, and I, a lot of this realization came to me this last year and a half, probably about the end of 2015. You know, I, I'm looking at the environment as to what rugby has, and I, I felt there's three things that rugby has an advantage of. It's one, it, it, it's because it's a, uh, I use the term loosely, young sport in terms of actual uh, development. Um, it, it has the ability to kind of 
be creative in whatever way it wants to. Uh, uh, you know, if, if it if it you know if it grew within a digital scape, it would be able to completely earn its its role there because it's not an area that's very well tapped into. Uh, the other thing was that I felt that the 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 equitability that comes with the play of women's and men's rugby has been a hu is a huge advantage over other sports because in any other sport you either there's always some kind of separation that goes between the women's and the men's side whether it's rule change whether it's uh, uniform whether it's uh, culture there's always something that just says oh well this is the WNBA and this is the NBA what's different well they can't dunk over here but you know it can do it here or you know it's it's hockey it's it's, whatever there's always something that's there but women when, when it comes to rugby it's the same across the board the only thing that changes is the gender all right um and then the third part was that you have a global an established global entity that is already all encompassing on all these controversial issue so there's not an issue of well is there a gender is there different genders in coaching well rugby already has shown that women can coach men men coach women boom you have that you have that in referees women more so now women refing men's games high level men's games at that too versus uh and men doing it such and such and you see the crossover and you have this established global entity but for me, it's always been what you can do within the women's sport. Like, there's the market that's there for the women. And I felt like rugby has done a very, and in general, has done a very poor job in really outrageously marketing the women's side. You know, uh, for you, whenever you see how they present it, what is, what is, what is the takeaway that you see? kind of get whenever you see how whether rugby in the u.s or world rugby presents the women's game i mean it's definitely frustrating um because you see it at every event every like and i mean there are incremental you know there are incre incremental improvements but you are just kind of you feel a little like battered by some of the, you know, the inequality there, but um, I don't really know what to say. I, I will say that uh, I don't know if you read the the board minutes from the last like USA Rugby Congress thing, and I yeah. was pleasantly surprised to read about the um, you know, the 2018 World Cup sevens in San Francisco, where it appeared that. They really had to battle with world rugby to have it go like men, women, men, women, and not just like women in the morning, men in the afternoon, you know, like they wanted to integrate it so that it got more, uh, more visibility. So, you know, those, those kind of things make you a little bit more hopeful, but then there are other things where, you know, the USA women played Canada in Chula Vista for, you know, two games in a week and the first game wasn't open to the public. Right. And I mean, I asked them, they said it was more of a facility issue, but still it's, you know. It's a national only, game. Yeah, it's the only two tests before they go to Ireland, and, you know, it wasn't open to the public. So, I don't know, it's just really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Oh, um, and, and, and that's the thing. I, I, I've, I've always felt that with, with rugby, like, Whenever you see a separation within the two gender sides, it's very odd to me because the issue still is the same problem across the board for both sides. Like you're if you're giving more, you know, time to the men, well, in my opinion, well, you're still not getting very much because you're not seeing the maybe you're seeing a little bit of uh, of growth in terms of maybe adult play here and there and some in youth, but when it comes to casual fandom, like that's a point where it's like you're you're not actually accessing new people. You're just kind of rotating this hamster wheel. So whenever you're separating the women's side, it's like you 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 you're running with half of your your leg and your arm tied behind your back. And so uh, I've always wondered, you know, from from those who have more experience within within the area, you know, what it always seems like to 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 those who've known like why what what seems to be this constant why that there's this separation that they have, knowing that you're in a niche sport, you're niching a niche sport. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, I don't pretend to know the answer why it's separated. I assume it has something to do with money and like where the money is appropriated. Um, but I think, and you know, there's a lot of like they used to do. They, I think, a couple summers ago when France came out here, they doubled up with like the men's and women's game. Like women played first, and then the men came on and kind of like combined that. So if there is that fear that um, you know the women couldn't sustain a bigger venue, like that's an intermediate solution, and um, it does pair. It brings like the men and women together, so you have that full body exposure, like you were saying. Um, I don't know. I think we have, there's just a lot of funding and money issues behind that too. Yeah. You know, and and look, you you had the opportunity of working with a company that has, for what it's worth, shown that they at least have been able to eventually get to some kind of success in in rugby with United World Sports. Did has working with those guys given you kind of an insight into? what is capable of working versus what might not be so hot cuz USA 7s and yeah to some smaller extent the CRCs have been relatively uh at least critically successful and uh you know USA 7s is slowly becoming more financially successful you know seeing that that those mindsets where have you been able to what have you been able to absorb from them well um i definitely think USA 7s is a successful event um, and I enjoy it but I mean you know the the women there they haven't had they were added this year because um, you had three entities there taking on the cost so it was United World Sports World Rugby and USA Rugby that all got together to pay for the women to you know be in the stadium and have that added stop there or to have the stop relocate there um, but it's been you know pretty difficult in the past like there's been this elite international sevens you know part of the lvi but you had national team women playing there and they were playing out on you know the silver bowl fields which you know is like dusty and it's not suitable for a national team um and it's you know it's been difficult for them to get into this stadium there is money value attached to it and you know that's what they used to rely on as part of their argument as to why there wasn't a bigger presence in the stadium. So um, it's been that overall, I'm grateful to have been part of that organization. So you really can see into those bigger events, but you know, it took some teeth pulling to get the women of bigger presence there. 